Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Time is now six o'clock here in UK. About 11 p.m. in Bangladesh, half past 10 in India. And a warm welcome to today's session, Gronti's Facebook Live session with contemporary poet and writers, as you all know. As you know, the Gronti is one of the leading platforms that promote global literature, philosophy, sociology, anthropology, or any new, new idea, new thoughts in relation to literature or philosophy. It hosts a, a phenomenal festival that is called International Poetry Festival uh, that, was, that was supposed to happen actually this year in July, but for COVID, we, we, we had to postpone this. And perhaps if the time allows, we will try to do it sometime, perhaps by the end of this year. <clears throat> that happens in London mainly, but this year we were supposed to host this in Oxford University as well, and some other wonderful academic venues, just with the aim to connect uh, more academicians uh, and most obviously the poetry lovers all around the globe. Many thanks who have already joined and uh, this session, as part of this session, as you know, we, we are featuring some wonderful poets and writers of this time. So this live session is a streaming uh, in my, will be streaming in my profile very soon, but it's streaming from Gronthi's page and it will be streaming, it is streaming from Shoda's uh, profile page as well. So please do share and let others uh, be the part of this session. Uh, let me introduce our uh, poets and writers along with the panel members today. Shamim Chan uh, is the just, Please let me know whether uh, this live session is streaming okay. And did you manage to share? Yeah, only done. Yeah, so that's that's streaming live. Okay, fantastic. Shamim Shahan is the editor of the Gronti, and Gronti started its uh, journey 30 years ago, uh, promoting experimental literature, powerful and experimental literature. Uh, and it continues its journey, it continues its publication, which is uh, the Gronti, uh, as you, some of you perhaps know, most of you perhaps know. Uh, so please, uh, uh, please do share, uh, uh, especially under this, in this pandemic, poetry and writings can be in, can be in your association uh, while, you are self-isolating and you may find, like I always say, a bit of redemption, a bit of ventilation uh, through the hunting verses of, uh, of the poets tonight. So please do share and let your friends be the part of the session. Let me introduce our poets uh, today, poets and writers today. Uh, we have Miles Slater. So Miles Slater is a writer and musician, and good thing that we will listen to music as well today. Great. Based in York, UK. He currently presents the art show on Jorvik Radio and fronts the York-based band Miles and the Chan Gang. His poetry collection include The Border, and animals. And his writing has appeared in numerous anthologies and magazines. Miles, like Philip Larkin, Arlie Bruce, Springsteen, Elbaum, and, and Marmite. You may find 
more information uh, in Miles' website, which is, which is www.milesslater.co.uk. Many thanks, Miles, for joining and warm welcome to today's session. Thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we have Claire Potter today. Claire Potter is <clears throat> Claire Potter Spilling Histories, Cinnamon Press 2016, 2006, that was published, will be followed by A Certain Darkness, a bilingual poet and performer Claire has translated for the National Poet of Wales, was a high, was a, a Hay Festival writer at work, enjoys facilitate, facilitating community projects and collaborating with Zaz musician. So, two of our poets seemingly have uh, a visible connection with music. <clears throat> She's currently researching the creative process for Threshold, a new poetry collection, thanks to a literature Wales bursary. She directed BBC Wales documentary, The Wall and the mirror. Claire, many thanks for joining and a warm welcome to today's session. Thank you, thanks very much, Ahmed. We also have another wonderful writer, Sri Ganguly. As a child, Sri Ganguly moved around all over India. Every one or two years, she was living in a different city and had to adjust many different micro worlds, as she likes to call it. Even from a very early age, the written word always fascinated her. It was writing that enabled, enabled her to make sense of the world, a world in, wh in which she was both the outsider and the insider. Many of her writings were published in the newspaper journals throughout her childhood, and she went to do her master's in comparative literature uh, as she wanted to explore even more worlds. As only, as only books enable, enable us to do. Around this time, she also won the prestigious Johorlal Nehru Award for painting and other things she, she is passionate about and something that influences her writing deeply, even now. She has many short fiction that has been published in many prestigious anthologies. Many, many thanks, Sri, for joining and a warm welcome to today's session. Thank you, thanks. So let us start with, let us start with Miles. How are you, Miles? How are you spending your time in this? In Actually, this it's been time? it's yeah. been really good for me because I've been writing loads and um, working on various creative things. So actually, it's 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 been pretty good, really. I mm -hmm. found it um, a bit lonely sometimes, um, which, which, which is perhaps we have fated for actually. <laughs> <laughs> so the first few weeks that was quite hard but I'm happy now that we're starting in the UK now we're starting to come out of it although that's controversial because some people think we should stay yeah. in lockdown and other people think let's get out there and live yeah. um, but I'm quite happy that we're starting to come out of it now and uh, hopefully things will will, will uh, resume soon. But, but did you find the link okay? Did everyone find link okay? And did you manage to share? Did you all manage to share in our timeline? So our... I thought it was going to be on the Souder page and I can't see it on the Souder Arts page. Mm -hmm. uh, you may find in Souder page, yeah. This is uh, streaming. I can see that this is uh, streaming from Souder page. If you... Is it on the Souder page? Yeah, Souder page. And now I have uh, shared this as well. You can see. Mm. I have shared, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Claire, did you find everything okay? This live streaming is available in show this page and you can find it. 
I, uh, I did, I believe. So I've turned my computer off now because it interferes with my signal. But yes, I did shoot. Yeah. Uh, Shri, you've, uh, everyone yeah. found everything okay? Yeah. I, I think I've managed to share. I hope so, at least, you know. Uh, let me, die. okay. So this is available in my profile. Uh, great. Granthi, Shaudo, Radha. No, uh, you, you see that uh, this is streaming live from Shaudo. So, and then the, you'll find like, comment, and share. So you can share from there. Okay, I'm streaming it now. Okay, great. Uh, uh, Shri can do the same as well. I can see that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, go to show this page, you just allowed perhaps in your timeline, but you can. I did. Yeah, you can share. The best if you can share, then you, right. the audiences can just... join from One second. Uh, your follower base. So Miles. Uh, yes, so uh, you, uh, seemingly your work is, the speed of your work has been increased now because you are at home. Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean, I found it really, from a, from a creative point of view, it's yeah. been really good for me because hmm. I wrote a number of poems and I'll maybe read one actually, right. um, that came out of the whole lockdown thing and the COVID-19 thing. Um, and I also worked on a, on a book of poems, which hopefully is going to be coming out soon and various other things as well. So I, from a, from a writing and creative point of view, I actually found it, this been really positive. Oh, great. So let us perhaps start with a bit of music, if you don't mind. Oh, you want to, you want to start? You're, you're a musician yeah. as well, uh, an acclaimed musician. You will find number of links, number of performances in uh, <clears throat> Miles's website which is www.mileslater.co.uk. Yeah. Um, Ahmed, it's actually Salta. Can I, can I just make that? Oh, Salta. Oh, correction. sorry. I'm really sorry. Really, really <laughs> it's sorry. It's okay. No yeah. worries. Yeah. So, um, this is a song I wrote. I've, I've got this band we call Mars and the Chain Gang. And yeah. uh, we just we just did some recording at the weekend, which was another really nice thing. But this is a song I wrote quite a few years ago. This is called Road to Damascus. Come on, darling, let's go out tonight. I got two strong arms, wanna hold you tight. Let's go out and chase the night. Smart is true, and your eyes are bright. Can I find my road? Can I find my road? Can I find my road? You know I'm asking. Can I find my road? Can I find my road? I'm a to Damascus. Come on, darling, let's go. Got two strong arms, one hold you tight. So let's go over to the other side of the town. Paradise ain't so crowded, we can hang around. Hold me close and show me what life is really worth. Whisper a promise and not a curse. Someone bit the apple and the apple turned sour. Somebody else saw the sea. The sea became a flower. Can I find my road? Can I find my road? Hold you. Can I find my road to the master? Can I find my road? Can I find my road? Can I find my road? To Damascus. 
There you go. Wow. <laughs> There you go, yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So how do you balance your time for poetry and music? Um, it's a good question. Um, I, I find that they kind of complement each other, although my poetry, the writing in the poetry is much more precise and much mm -hmm. more careful. The, mm -hmm. the song lyrics tend to be a little bit less careful and a, bit, a little bit more cliche, whereas the poetry is very, very precise. So do you, um, you write lyrics as well? So you are, you are a lyricist? Yeah, I write the song lyrics. But for yeah. me, that for me, lyrics mm -hmm. and poetry are, are quite different things. So the poetry, exactly. I'm very, very careful, whereas I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a bit more sloppy with the lyrics. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. uh, can we have a poem? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, kind of do you want to... What what kind of thing would you like? Would you like a would you like a lockdown poem? Yeah, perhaps start with best to start with the lockdown poem. Okay, I'll read you this. Now this isn't yep. this isn't it's not a great piece of writing, but I just mm -hmm. I tried to write about what happened as if it was in the past mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and just the craziness of everything. It's mm -hmm. called it's called that spring. Mm -hmm. And this was featured on the Manchester Manchester Metropolitan University. They had a series of poems around lockdown, and this was one of the ones that mm -hmm. featured. It's called That Spring. Mm -hmm. And it mentions Landidno, which is, um, which is in Wales where Claire is. Mm -hmm. That Spring. In Landidno, Kashmiri goats came down from the hills and visited the towns. T sorry, visited the town. They are curious goats, are, said town councillor Carol Maruby. The curious goats stood on their hind legs in the evenings to partake of hedges. In Tel Aviv, jackals arrived at Hay Arkham Park. A woman left dog food for them. Do not feed the jackals, said a local vet. Rats pattered in New York City. In India, Swami Chakrapani Maharaj advocated the use of cow urine to purify areas affected. Cow dung was also mentioned. In Tennessee, Matt Colvin stockpiled 17,700 hand sanitizers and wipes and was investigated for price gouging, then helped volunteers load two thirds of his supply onto trucks. In Sydney, a woman in Woolworths got so excited about the attainment of toilet roll that a knife was pulled. In England, the prime minister was in hospital and two nurses stayed with him. Neither had any connection with the Bullingdon Club. Some adults worked on their last will and testament. People read. There was a lot of Zoom. Folks crossed the road to keep away from each other or had moments of revelation near leaves, sunlight and skin. Schools were closed. Couples drank at home or said they were done or kept away or laughed or talked more. James Bond was set back. The Olympics held their medals. <laughs> Churches closed and the bread and wine became virtual with some churches reporting an increase in interest. Easter eggs stood gleaming on shop shelves, turning extravagantly cheap. There were a lot of pregnancies in the months that followed. Some prisoners were let out early. Phone masts were attacked. Lee Marshall sold cases of loo roll while parked in a lay-by, swapping paper for paper. On Thursdays, people clapped or smacked, or smacked saucepans. Wonky, colourful rainbows grinned in windows upside down. The blossom grew again on the trees. It was white and bright and did not require petrol or plastic. The sun shone and dogs lay beneath it. Squirrels went about their business. The goats in Landidno seemed quite content to stand and eat at the hedges, while very few cars went by. I've missed the ending, <laughs> but you get the idea, yeah. you get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great, Miles. I'll come back to you with uh, uh, some questions, actually, uh, uh, how poetry comes to you, uh, perhaps. But let us start with Claire. How are you, Claire? Hi. How are you? How are you coping? How are you coping this, this I should say, unprecedented time? Better to say unprecedented time instead of uh, using 
any other adjective. So how are you uh, spending this time? Uh, well, I have two children, one's 10 and one's 13. So they're um, at home and trying to um, cope with things in a creative way. So we're writing journals every night and we've done that since day one. So that's been really nourishing. I wasn't coping too well initially, I must be honest. And um, my second poetry collection is a long time coming. But in this, uh, what is it, 12 weeks, I've managed to write a pamphlet, which kind of surprised me a little bit. So what I had done was I'd actually returned to poetry, not as a profession and as something I need to do, but actually for the, for the very reason I started writing poetry was to figure things out. So it became a bit of a savior for me and a safe space. Um, so that's hmm. helped. Yeah, um, so poetry is, is giving you perhaps a bit of solace and uh, diverting mind uh, into into the play, into the game of words, perhaps. Uh, but um, for our audience, uh, Claire is, like I said, Claire is a Welsh speaker. And then that is something I, uh, very interesting, speaking writer and performer who studied in MA in Afro-Caribbean literature uh, in Mississippi and taught uh, in New Orleans for a decade. So she's an award-winning poet. Uh, awards include two literature, Welsh, Wales uh, Writing, Bursary, the John Tripp Award for Spoken Poetry, and the Jim Criddle Prize for Celebrating the Welsh Language. language. She has translated the work of National Poet of Wales uh, was a Hay Festival writer at work uh, for two years and performed at the uh, Smithsonian Folk Live Festival, USA. And uh, quite importantly, uh, that is something perhaps I am personally interested in as well. In 2016, she received Art Council Wales funding for a poetry and jazz collaboration. That is. Yeah, something that perhaps our audience will uh, will be interested in to find out how it went. But let us start with, uh, so that was to respond to the trauma of Hurricane Katrina. So, so if, if your collaboration works well for uh, people who suffered uh, trauma in Hurricane, so it should, it should perhaps, uh, uh, it should work for people who are uh, suffering um, traumatic experience actually uh, for COVID. Uh, let us start with uh, you. Let us start with poetry, Claire. If you kind of read uh, perhaps two or three poems now, and then we'll we will talk after this. Sure. Thank you. Um, so the first poem I want to read is uh, the first poem in the pamphlet I put together. And it's about the, when it all happened, COVID, I noticed there were lots of people doing things online and mm. I was, all my work had been canceled, but I was being offered to do things via Zoom. And I actually was so overwhelmed that I went into shutdown. And um, so this poem is, is in response to that. And it's also um, on the Manchester um, Met University page. But but more than that, which I'm really proud of, is um, the musician Will Lawton um, found the poem and it's on his album, a collaborative album of poetry and music um, called Salt of the Earth. So I could put a link up for that later, but it's a very beautiful album. It's called Unmade. I'm in fight and flight with my poetry. Everyone's uploading incredible acts of creativity. Not me. My work scribbled at dawn on pages spread all over my unmade bed. A good burial. A layer of papers to protect my muses. My words settle around me, quietly. The way I've been holding my children, these poems are holding me. Um, and so I, I, I got, 
I got some sort of healing from words which I didn't expect, really. And this poem, um, I wrote this uh, when I lived in America. I had lots and lots of dreams. I was very homesick, although I loved living there. Um, and I'm finding at the moment, I don't know about you, but I'm having lots of strange dreams. So this was um, a dream I actually had when I was in America. Mm -hmm. And it's about my childhood chapel. Sorry, I've got a load of light shining in on me. Um, it's very <laughs> hot. <laughs> um, fragments. The chapel squats on the edge of the park where I meet Jesus. I'm flying onto clouds, hands smelling of rust from the swing chain. The crows on the chapel roof make a racket. Mrs. John's, John's dog yelps. He wants me to steal him again. But I'm on the swing and twirling from a spiral. My mother calls five times. Everyone else has gone in for tea. My mother is making her way to the street corner. Mrs. John leans on her gate, straining for ma'am to tell her I steal her bloody dog. The park is quiet. The chapel lights up. In bed, I reach under my pillow and stroke a piece of porcelain. The Virgin Mary's little finger, broken when I smashed her statue to free Jesus out. Tomorrow, I'll hide it in my ballerina music box. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> many, many thanks. Claire, uh, I'm coming back to you uh, in a few minutes. So, <clears throat> Sri, how are you? Uh, you are on mute now, perhaps. Yeah, if you can lay on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, it's strange times. You know, I think we are all hanging on one day at a time, but no reason to complain. Exactly, exactly, exactly. For creative, for <clears throat> creative souls, no hindrance come as hindrance. They always can find their own ventilation. And I agree, with, I agree yeah. with Claire as well, that when times are disturbing, it's only yeah. your art that holds you, you know, that exactly. is something that comforts you, keeps you hoping, I think. Exactly, exactly, true. Uh, let us start with <clears throat> your reading, uh, quite a, um, Sri and I live in the same city. Uh, leaves. Uh, Shri performed in one of my open mic event, and uh, she she was reading one of her short story, and her her work uh, has been published in many prestigious anthologies. We'll talk about this, but let us let us have a bit of performance. If you kindly read from your short story. Um, or however, I, however you want to, however you have planned. I have something which is in between a short story and a poem. It's wow. about seven minutes long. Great. So it's like a dramatic monologue. So mm -hmm. Oh, what, fantastic. Please what go. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Go on, please. The piece is called Caffeine. You stand in the narrow alley in between the half houses where the wind forms a sharp tunnel. You tend to the rusted hanging basket that has suffered its consequence. The wilted flowers, the bruised leaves. You hold a cigarette and contemplate. The flame in between your fingers, it's beginning to change something inside you after all. A strange new freedom. Something that you anticipated perhaps Every time you took in the smoke and every time I made you stop. You hesitate. The wind is making hollow moaning sounds. This is where the bins live. Only yours at the, as the other house is empty now. The old man has died. You're afraid that your bin will topple over regurgitating its insides. And there will be no one to clean up the dirt. 
you are afraid that you will topple over and lie with your wounds exposed to the world. This fear makes you vulnerable, like a Japanese painting made of ink, fading, bleeding. But I know how reckless you can be with everything, your life, your smoking. Do you still have the little burn tattoo we made together? There was no other way to explain in words what I felt you were doing to yourself. Some action was required. Why do you hide it? Why did you take back the hope you gave me? I claim only a memory of the same. After a while, you go inside, fasten up your running shoes. There is a folded treadmill that leans against the kitchen wall. You unfold it and begin to run. You lean forward slightly, using every inch of your core. Your movements, rhythmic, mechanical. You're back to the essence of your automated life. You have left the blinds three-fourth open. The strings have knotted up. That position is now fixed. It's from here that I watch you. A strand of light streams in between the branches like a deadly ray and catches the ends of your hair as you stare at the ivy bush inside which many birds live. This bush that I had almost annihilated, remember? You put up a fight. It has a nest inside. I've seen it, please let it be. I can understand poverty. But this kind of kindness, why? For instance, why were you appalled when I told you that all architecture has to have an edge? A city has to be built such that it's sharp and unyielding. A beggar, a pigeon, a stray, not welcome just by its structure. Severity does have a purpose, my love. While you're running, the burn mark on your chest finally gets exposed. A glimpse, a unity. For a moment, I think that you know that you're being watched, that you have been watched. But I know you're too careless to even bother about your own instincts. You have not changed the lock yet, have you? After the lights go off, the little half house turns black like bitter brew, except for the bathroom upstairs where you shower. I stand in the narrow drive where the bins are kept, like I stand for many nights. This is where I wait as the water trickles down your limbs into the pipes, into the drain, a strand of your hair floating on it. The water is warm. It has extracted the very smell of your skin, the cells you have shed. The water brewed with you like a certain kind of caffeine, brewed with caution, with time. Crowned just right, not too coarse, neither too smooth, trickling down a few drops at a time, bittersweet, pure, perfect. Why did you, as a person, have to be so unlike your essence. A wet black hair of yours, I wear like a scarf round my neck, a talisman. This is my night kingdom. I guard it like I have guarded the leather and palladium gold eagle that you once gave me. Go hunt for your prey. Entangle the world in your talons. Don't eat carrion. Kill your prey, taste blood. Once I had dropped this key ring near your bins, not consciously, but somehow I wanted you to find it. But you of course never did. This is how you can be, callous, unengaged, 
so far away from the real world that I wonder if you're really there. Quietly, I remove my shoes and then unlock the door. The door creaks, but I know exactly how to turn it so that the sound is faint, so faint that you will never hear it from your shower. I can feel my hands shake a little, but I have done this once before. The room is dark, but I know exactly what where is. The treadmill is near, laid bare open. The cups, the plate, the sheer disarray, the chaos, disgusting. See how you've become, how disorganized. And yet, the house smells of you. Rain, grass, books. I inch forward, breathing gently, my breathing overpowered by the moaning of the wind. There is a hole in one of the pipes. We found out after much probing. So there is always a vibrating sound inside. The house has a hole in its heart, like you once said. The house is wounded. Today I have the poem that you once copied for me. My mistress, bend that brow of her, uh, hers, those deep dark eyes, their pride demurs. When pity would be softening though, fixed me a breathing while or two, life or death in balance, right? You see, I read it differently. People say it's a poem about eternal <clears throat> life. You thought so too, didn't you? I think it's meant differently. I inch towards the living room just to have a look. It's just the same as it was. The furniture I had gifted you, the plants, one of them completely dried out. I crush a leaf, its stem, the sticky sap like blood. I feel a thorn, all brittle, clinging onto the last of life, fair enough. Today is our last ride together. Yes, that is what it is. I slowly crawl towards the stairs. The bathroom light is still on. I know how long you can stay there. I hold my breath. I'm almost in the middle of the stairs. I can hear a whirring sound. I stand still. It increases as if my chest is vibrating, not unlike the house wounded. It's my phone, bloody phone. I'll check it later. It's my phone again. It's on silent, but there is this buzzing, this strange buzzing, this constant buzzing, 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 buzzing. I touch the bathroom door. It's discolored, rough, the wood peeling in places. Inside, I can hear your voice. It might just be nothing, but you know, I think there is someone inside the house. There is someone. Can you hear me? Um, there is someone. Three missed calls, a voice message. You have been calling me. This is the first time you have called me in months. In, or, in your hour of need, you called me and no one else. I'm here. We stand facing each other, you and I. You on one side of the door, me on another. But it's as if the door has melted and <clears> through <throat> it, I can see your deep, dark eyes stained with fear, so much like mine. I wonder what I should do next. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry anyone would, anyone would like to add anything? Uh, Claire, Miles? Feel free if you'd like to add anything on this uh, reading. I'm a bit worried that the house has got a hole in it. <laughs> uh, I love the physical physicality and the 
the way you read that tree was beautiful it was just it was like, exactly it was like water it was very um mesmerizing reading like, reading and then the way you weaved your plot mm -hmm. uh along with uh, we started with a talk uh, about loneliness uh, and uh, the monologue uh, uh, depicts a profound loneliness as well. well we can perhaps talk talk and talk on this but the way you weaved and the way you read perhaps uh, uh, seemingly uh, great for uh, myself seemingly soothing for myself and uh, others, perhaps the audiences. Let me read some audiences' comments. Uh, Mark Liney uh, wrote, they were great, Claire. Uh, that is for Claire. Mohua Boshu, uh, Claire, that was beautiful. Uh, Mohua Boshu loved it, Miles. So Miles, after Miles' performance, actually. Devashish Bhattacharya, a friend of us, uh, wrote, excellent, Sri very lyrical and a lot of depth in your writing. Okay. Quite clearly, quite clear, very clear. <clears throat> a lot of depth you created in your monologue. Uh, Joyita Benerji, beautiful, Palm Ghosh, loving your reading, uh, Sri Ganguly. Uh, Debashish Bhattacharya, hi Sri, all the, Sri, all the best. Ovanish Mantri, your voice, Sri, I use the word soothing. Wow, wow. Let's see. Camila <laughs> Prakriolova. Hello, Shri. Uh, Shah Ali Masudrana. Hello. Uh, hello, Shahan Bhai. Uh, Davinder Singh Lombaji, uh, who, is an, who is mainly an admirer of uh, Indian classical music and a regular audience of uh, Shoda's work, said Namushka to all. So Namushkar means salute, salute to all, all of the performers. Many thanks, Lavinderji, for watching. Mohua Bushu, uh, Ovanish Hello Street. So Jilu Rahman just joined from Bangladesh. Uh, many thanks, Jilu Rahman is a poet. Uh, enchanting, uh, just someone wrote um, for Sri. Devolina Shengupta, lovely and brilliant Sri. So there are many, many, uh, loved your emoting. Uh, I I could picture everything exactly. That was quite cinematic, very cinematic, very uh, visual. Uh, you created a very uh, uh, visual uh, images, yeah. <clears throat> almost like a stream of consciousness is happening in everyone's brain. Let us come back to uh, miles later. Shri, I would like to ask you actually, how do you develop your plot? But uh, I'll come back to you afterwards. Miles, let us, uh, please, can you tell us before uh, uh, you start reading your poems, how, how you write, I mean, how poetry comes to you? Let us uh, ask you in this way, instead of uh, yeah, saying that. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, um... Did you plan before? Did you did, did you plan before you write, or just it uh, all of a sudden you were driving and it comes? Uh, well, Claire, Claire said some, Claire said something really interesting uh, at the beginning when mm. um, she said that when she started writing, it was like a process of figuring stuff out. And for me, when I started, when I first started writing, mm. it was that it was being a teenager what on earth is going on? Who am I? What, you know, all of those sorts of teenage things. And it was that very much that process of working stuff out. And I think it still is actually in a way. Mm. Um, I, I was thinking recently about, about creativity and openness. And I thought, I, I kind of realized that mm. being open, having, trying to have a sort of an open mind and an open heart is really important and and suddenly you'll get these little ideas that will mm. come seemingly from nowhere mm. uh and they kind of I, I saw this thing the other day where paul simon was talking about when he wrote bridge over troubled water and he said he just he said he didn't know where it came from and the same thing billy joel once said about writing songs he said they just come from nowhere and it is a bit like that sometimes 
which is a really strange, it's a very odd thing to, it's a very hard thing to explain, but it is a bit like that. But I think this sort of attitude of, of having an open heart and an open mind is really important. Mm. So, uh, and also just a consecutive one, uh, how, how does editing uh, works for you? Because you are a musician and especially when I write poetry, uh, editing is a uh, constant process actually, hours after hours, perhaps after a year when the book, when the poetry has been published, still I find I can, but for, because you are a musician, so I mean, do you see whether, uh, do you measure the proportion of words through your year, whether, because I mean, sometimes you, you express things in certain ways, but when you listen, when you start reading, you find this word, doesn't is not perhaps rhythm rhythmically right or melodiously right because uh, that's because you are a musician i was thinking whether uh, the similar kind of process works for you i'm what the, the, the where i'm trying to get to and i haven't got there yet mm -hmm. is is that the poetry and the lyrics are as good mm -hmm. as each other that's mm -hmm. where i'm trying to get to but i'm not i'm not there yet so when mm -hmm. you write a song you're mm -hmm. thinking a lot about, or you often think about rhyming, whereas I don't write rhyming poetry. So they're quite mm -hmm. different things for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I would like to close the gap, really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Let us, uh, uh, let us have another reading, another performance from you, Miles. Okay, well, up this to is- you, Up we, to you, if you'd like to perform- uh, I'll do this like poem because- okay. um, Great. This, yeah. We were talking about loneliness. We're talking about loneliness, and mm. I, I wrote oh, this. Oh, that part. would be great. Yeah. Wrote, <laughs> well, you might. Yeah, it might be controversial. I am. I am just to let you know. I am uh, in the middle <laughs> actually. I'm doing a short uh, documentary on one or two things about loneliness, alienation. Right. Actually. Okay. So loneliness is is something that I uh, like to. Uh, focus on, and uh, this is a theme that I always love to explore. Many thanks, so, please do, please come. So, so this is a poem <clears throat> that I was, the big thing that came out of the last three months was about, was the, the big theme was about isolation and connection. And do we want to be isolated? Most people don't want to be isolated. Most people want to connect. Most people felt a, a, in some way mm. a disconnect and a loneliness. And mm. It struck me that this was going into our physical lives and this crazy thing where, where we were told if we had a boyfriend or girlfriend in another house, we couldn't, we couldn't mm. go there. And in The Guardian, this was about um, four weeks, four or five weeks ago, The Guardian had this article and the headline, mm. was, the headline was, Dutch official advice to single people, find mm. a sex buddy for lockdown. Mm. So, so I wrote this, which was out of people saying to me that they were feeling lonely and stuff. Mm -hmm. Anna placed a clip on YouTube. Lying near pillows, she pleaded, amused for a gigolo. No clothes, I called. Her daughter moaned. Karen posted secret thoughts on Facebook. Anybody fancy popping over for a shag? I smiled. Chris went for a walk with a human. I'm going to ask for a hug, he said. I've not been touched in weeks. Mm. I nodded. My secret buddy was due to turn up any day now to make bolognese, smoke cigarettes, and kiss me in a room with candles. She arrived, I think. Before I caressed her fictional breasts, I stood before her, uncertain. Come on, one of us said. Take that mask from your lips. Touch me. Wash your hands of rules. Mm. Yeah, so there you go. Wow. That's great. Great. Great, Miles. Any, anyone would like to add anything on Miles' reading? Um, I would say that, Miles, I don't think you, um, I think your lyrics are great and I don't think you need to bridge, bridge any gaps. I think what you're doing with your music and your lyrics is something entirely different. Um, and I think you should just keep them separate in your heart and brain and creative process. Oh, thank you. That's kind of you to say that. Um, 
and that whole sense I mean I'm, I'm in a house with like four people and it's like this and but one of my friends you know she she has no children and she's on her own and so we've been having talks and your poem really picked up on that feeling of not being touched that what what, what is that like to actually not have any contact at all and it's it's a new and and scary thing and the mask is I love that as a metaphor as well taking the mask off I thought that was really beautiful thank you very much thank it you. just seemed to be a common thing that a lot of people were reflecting on so exactly exactly would you like to uh, do another perhaps music or what do you want us what would you like a song or a poem uh, perhaps another song yeah uh, so okay So this is um, mm -hmm. uh, so um, so. There's a new Bob Dylan album out, which people right. are talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not crazy about it, but we won't get into that. But mm -hmm. um, I loved I absolutely love Bob Dylan, and he really inspired me. And I tried to when I wrote this song, I tried to write a song that had a kind of slightly Bob Dylan mm -hmm. touch about mm -hmm. it. This is called A Way of Being Free. <laughs> You got the whole of creation in your heart. Our times are you want to do is to the whole thing apart. If you're looking for answers. Don't look at me Every one of us is searching For a way of being free You can wander from pole to pole in patience Target at your sleep. Spent forever, small town, never wish to leave. Spend your nights in the city's bar, dividing lines of cocaine. Wait for a bite on the line by the river in late September rain. If you're looking for us, don't Every one of us is searching for a way of being free. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Miles. Thank you. Many, many, many thanks. Many thanks. Mm. Uh, hey. I, I have one request for Miles. Mm. The order, I think so that one is first book from your adult's poems book, isn't it? Sorry, Shamim, can you say again? The border. Oh, yeah. That's the first book for poem, right? Yeah, so the first book was called The Border. Right. And then there was a book called Animals, and I'm now working on the third. I'm trying to get the 
like Claire said earlier, it takes an age, but I'm trying to get the third book sorted out. I want to request later on, you can read any uh, particular specific poem from this book, please. From which one? It's anyone, just particular, just your favorite poem. Anyone favorite poem from this book? From the first book? Yes, this. Okay, fine, sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, perhaps we have to, we are moving on to Claire now. Uh, so Miles, does it make sense if you kindly read, uh, I'm coming back to you and if you just prepare, uh, I'm not sure whether you have enough time, but if you- No, I'll, prepare... stay, I'll stay, it's fine, I'll stay, it's fine. Great, great, yeah. look at this. This is the power of word, this is the power of music. Oh, <laughs> great. And this is the power of lovely association, many thanks. Bravo on this lovely association, lovely association of great friends. Anyway, uh, Claire, mm. first of all, uh, well, we are, uh, we would like you to perhaps uh, read some more poems, but first of all, how, how poetry comes to you? Does it, because I'm not sure whether it happens to you sometime, you, you just uh, perhaps saw something and then it develops, uh, or sometimes a word perhaps, you know, provoke you to write something. Does it happen to you uh, similarly, or you just uh, uh, think about a theme, plot, and sit down and, and write it? It's, it's a great question. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, sometimes if you get a commission and you, you have to write a poem about a river, then you have to consciously think of it. And I do a lot of research then. Um, mm. But usually um, it comes from a feeling or um, seeing something. So, for instance, I'm going to read you a poem in a minute about my little girl in the woods. So watching her darting between the trees, I was like, mm. um, it wasn't anything conscious or in intellectual, but it was a feeling I had that that was a, a special sacred moment that I needed to capture and, mm. and the words follow. Um, now and again, I'll hear a phrase or I'll be thinking of something and it will be nagging at me for a while and I have to try and work it out. And the only way to work it out for me is on the page. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not often working on a poem. They come quite quickly. So wow. someone said to me right. though, perhaps you are working on it, but on a, mm. I don't know if you agree with that tree, but exactly. on, a sub, on a subconscious. Mm -hmm. It comes quite subconsciously, sometimes as an oracle, actually. That is the word I always use. I'm not sure why. Uh, uh, it's like two parallel, it's like two parallel worlds. Sorry about that. No, 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 please, but please, please, it, yeah. It's like you're living in two worlds, I think. Mm. Do you agree? Mm. I mean, sometimes when you have a piece in your mind, mm. you feel that you have your reality, but then mm. the reality of the piece is in your head, and that's just as real. Do you feel mm. that? I, just, I, don't I agree on this. I, I agree on this, but um, what Claire said, uh, I mean, most of the great poems perhaps uh, were written uh, without uh, inputting any intellectual contribution. It came as almost like Oracle. If we, I mean, whatever uh, we, we agree that this is the great piece of uh, poetry uh, from uh, ancient days to till now. Uh, there are very few things, perhaps you you will like it, you see the power, uh, power of the poetry, but you may not like it. You may not read it for yourself after midnight. So what you will read after midnight, that is uh, destined, that is fated. It has to resonate uh, something which is not artificial, which, is, which doesn't reflect the artificial uh, intellect. Sometimes, perhaps, like you said, you saw a, a you saw an image, and that perhaps intrigues you to write. You you from an image you perhaps find a powerful metaphor, yeah. and then you perhaps get get intrigued to write it, because uh, the the powerful metaphor is the main thing that you would like to uh, present uh, through this poem. Then this is perhaps the. Uh, uh, action of intellectuality, how you hide it, how, so that people don't understand, people don't understand that you are writing this poem just to, just for this word, 
just because you were intrigued by this word, just because you were intrigued by this meta, you know, metaphors or allegory. Uh, I'm not sure whether it happens to you, but Claire, when you said this, I, I, uh, I was thinking that you would perhaps agree on this. That, uh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, if you, you know, if we go in a forest, we'll see trees. That's all. That's what we see: trees and some birds and color, and we'll smell different things. But what we're not seeing is under the ground, the trees have complex root systems. They're sending messages. That there's all sorts of things going on. There are creatures subterranean, and I think, as a poet or musician or artist, we're tapping into or um, we're 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 doing that work so that um, there's an energy field there. And I think if we write from that, if we're able to tap into that and be true to that, when somebody reads or hears our work, they feel it too. And they don't need to intellectualize it. It's, it's that beneath the soil that we're all connected with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes if you intellectualize the, uh, the text, uh, the the main smell of the poetry is gone, perhaps, you know, sometimes, but power, you can, some of the great poetry, which are, which is intellectual poetry, uh, when you read Westland, for an example, uh, you see the power, but perhaps you don't read it after midnight, you yeah. read something that, yeah, yeah. You, you read something uh, which perhaps uh, echoes uh, the sound of your soul. But let us, and, and from the poetry that you read last time, Claire, that was quite visible, quite clear, that it came it came from the heart. But truly, in this capitalist world, commercial world, poetry has to have kind of a commercial value. And then you have to write for, uh, like you said, when you are commissioned for doing something, uh, that may not be the great piece of artwork, uh, that may not... Uh, always uh, uh, reflect uh, your mind or the way you want to write. But sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, commissioned work uh, um, is perhaps, we have to continue just for profession. Sometimes commissioned work even, even uh, uh, although you, after, before you commissioned uh, to write something, you didn't, in, you didn't think in that way, but when it appeared, it appeared quite greatly, quite uh, magnific magnificently. Uh, but let us let us perhaps uh, uh, have uh, some of your poetry performance, Claire. Thank and you. to be honest, to be honest, to you whatever you I mean, what you read uh, last time that shows that it, it, it this is the flow of your emotion without without putting artificial uh, intellectuality. Let us okay. listen more. Let us listen more. Um, it's interesting because um, Miles um, lyric, um, looking for, if you're looking for answers, don't look at me. Um, I think that's, you know, everybody was saying, oh, the art, you know, the artists should be speaking right now and giving us some answers. And that was a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and so I turned to actually my children and I've been observing my children, in particular my daughter, because she's young. She's still in that playful imagination space. So I'd like to read a poem. Um, mm -hmm. We usually walk through the woods and there's a path to go to school and right. it's interesting since lockdown we've actually been going into the woods we never used mm -hmm. to go into the woods it's, it's been a gift to us really and is it okay if I read this in Welsh? Please yeah please do please. So it's called Llaes a Goedweg and it means um, the voice of the forest and essentially it's just about her becoming at one with the wood and drawing me in um, and she puts her hands around me, her arms, and it feels like um, a bird's wings or, or like a prayer that's been answered because I felt completely safe and at one um, with my child in the woods. Llais y goedweg. Mae hi'n divlani ti ôl y dail sigl. Dawn sy golau gwyrdd. Y llais yn llifo i siarad yr adar. Sibrud and Ant. Can a coy do we now? A spread bach deredes, and Denny v moan ir calon a goidwig hid dolles. Fell envis, my heen summed, and trick your vegan, whar I get em shagag. Am Christiae. 
a doilo um compass, a dene the dare in dee. Fel bendeth do, fel gobaith, fel gwedi gluedig, and dod nol atai. Um, did you oh, want me to? What a beautiful smell of different language. How beautifully yeah. performed, Claire. Thank you. It's Great. interesting because I'm second Great. language Welsh. I, I, I wasn't raised mm. speaking Welsh. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I can translate from Welsh into English, but I, it's probably not a very strong poem in the Welsh mm. language, but mm. I have to exercise that organ, that muscle, mm. otherwise I'm not going to get better. Mm -hmm. Your words sounded like music. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. It's very exactly musical. such yeah. an apparent musicality in your words, in your yeah. uh, very lyrical ups and downs, almost yeah. like a, a, a singing yeah. music. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, Beautiful. That's the Welsh language. Yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, please go on with another. Oh, sure. So, um, my daughter, um, she's been right. She's been saying poems before she could write them. So. This is about a moment where she had a burst of needing and I had to be her servant. <laughs> so she was she was uh, perhaps uh, fortunate to be born under a poet's mum. Uh, I think we were destined for one another, for sure. Um, it's called, So Ma'am, <laughs> you've done a poem by me doing a poem? <laughs> <laughs> Sun trapped on my steamer chair. Mm -hmm in Mitch Album's book on faith, while birds, dogs, mowers, all shared sounds. Ava was on her swing, tight spiraling. As she and swirled out came a poem. I ran to get her chalks and like scout in the opening scenes of To Kill a Mockingbird, she hummed and got her words down on the patio spent a long time dotting her eye. The poem expressed her empathy for the elderly and it arrived in pastels, ephemeral material. But just like a butterfly, we admired the colors and the moment the unfolding words offered. Then she sneezed and off they flew. Uh, it, it was just so delightful that it was a really spiritual moment where she had been just mm -hmm. la, la la and she was writing on the patio with her chalks and then when she finished she read the poem and then she sneezed it was like <laughs> this moment complete you know this um it, it was it was lovely thank you thank you thank you uh, <clears throat> many many thanks uh, claire uh, i really love Really, really love the uh, the way you construct your last poem in Welsh language. I well, I listen to Welsh language, but that is perhaps the power of poets. They can they know the art to make a language uh, more musical. And I was uh, thinking about uh, another. Sometimes you don't want to know the meaning. You want you want to read more. And that, uh, and then you want to construct your own meaning, actually. And um, I'm sure some of our audiences can relate to uh, what uh, T.S. Eliot said about one of the great French poets uh, I have ever read, without knowing the meaning, actually, to be honest. Uh, Sergeant Perse, the T.S. Eliot, uh, Anabad. Uh, I'm sure uh, I'm not sure whether you read you you had the opportunity to read this. Uh, Anabad is ex excellent. Uh, piece of uh, poetry, but that is that has huge obscurity issue. Uh, and then T.S. Eliot said that it's better to read 10 times, 15 times because of its musicality, and then you construct your own meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, many, many thanks. Let me read some audience's feedback. Jutika Bishar said, I agree with Sri about parallel word, uh, parallel word, right of it. Will Lauten said, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Jutika said, sorry, somebody could show a little more precision. Uh, uh, so lyrical, Claire, beautifully performed, beautiful poems, uh, and, uh, and off the flew, lovely Claire. 
uh, Jeet Ganguly uh, wrote. Anyway, many thanks. Uh, <clears throat> let me introduce, uh, I'm not sure they have introduced um, a friend of mine who, who, who is doing a phenomenal job actually, Shami Chahan, who edits uh, the Granthi Little Magazine. Little Magazine in Bengal, uh, the name of a revolution. Revolution because it, it uh, challenges the existing writing style and then try to develop uh, uh, experimental writing, uh, try to develop its own flow. So it challenges all renowned, uh, the poets that who made their legacy and try to develop new writing, new voices. And uh, 30, 30 years ago, uh, Gronti started his journey under his leadership. And then, then he's a poet as well. And uh, quite uh, phenomenally, he, uh, uh, he hosts a festival in London, uh, which is International Poetry Festival, uh, hoping for the best, but I don't think, uh, practically, I'm not sure uh, whether it will be mm, quite feasible to host this festival this year, uh, but let's hope for the best. Shri, I'm coming back to you. So how would you develop your plot? Uh, so the, the way you develop, because I, I, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I watch number of, I watch a um, lot of films and then I, uh, uh, this is, this was uh, my intention actually to write poetry in, in celluloid. So that's why, I invested a lot of, uh, an awful amount of time uh, in reading four films, in writing films, uh, in making films. And then uh, the way uh, the, the digesis, I should say in cinematic language, uh, uh, you created <clears throat> in your uh, weaving uh, is, is, is mostly cinematic. So did you ever come up with an idea to Make film. Just as a, just a personal question, did you ever think of making film, or did you ever think of visualizing, making a visual images, visual presentation of uh, your plot that you write in your short story? Um, actually, I think um, I'm very much into painting, or I was rather till I was 19, 20 years old, and maybe mm. the visual angle comes from that. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the I, I do actually believe what I said that when I'm writing something, I allow myself to get into a different world. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Sometimes, you know, I do some research on paintings, which I'm liking, like my all time favorite, uh, Leonara Carrington. She's a Mexican mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. Yaya Kusama, people like that. And I actually look at their paintings. But as you said, something comes from a word or a mm -hmm. moment or a feeling. Mm -hmm. That happens to me, that it. happens to me. Yeah. Whenever, I, whenever I write something, whenever I think of any plot, whenever I even uh, try to write a screenplay or something. Like that, exactly. Anyway, you it actually, comes from a micro, yes. micro element, yes. Yeah, please go. Or, or like Claire said, said with nature in the woods as well, that was a very powerful way of describing it. Mm -hmm. He said tree and roots, that roots are always there and it's a part of us which is finding something, a world beyond, maybe. So yes, it needs a little help and a lot of grumpiness, I think, on my part when I'm <laughs> writing a story. I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to be interrupted. But so yes, I do create a visual world. I've never thought of cinema or um, making mm. but how, how did How did plot comes to you? I don't know. That's the thing. I mean, so do you, uh, it's not mm. like sort of how, uh, Coleridge, Coleridge wrote his Kubla Khan. It came to his dream or something like this. Sometimes not... I shouldn't be saying this, but maybe parts of it sometimes I'm like, I dream a lot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I do have many dreams. Okay. And, we are losing, you know. <laughs> we're lo losing the uh, ability to dream actually. It's the best thing that you can dream. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. But I think nature is a very powerful influence as well. Yeah. You know, when nothing comes to you and there is chaos and loneliness, oh. like Miles said, you know, <laughs> in his poem, which yeah. I could so relate to that poem on loneliness, because no matter, I mean, I share space with my husband and 
he's just amazing but whoever you're with wherever you are loneliness 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 always even comes uh, yeah. when you are in crowd it doesn't matter how you are cared how you are uh, so that is one thing uh, but uh, loneliness is something that always operates in creative mind so how would you describe your own loneliness sometimes i cannot express myself talking yeah. i think i mean that's why i'm not giving good feedback because i'm mm. taking it all in i wouldn't say i'm very good at communication i'm better at painting and writing you mm. know so so sometimes that is my loneliness also mm. there's another thing i am a really soft person and that sort of in between space of being soft and hard of being mm. powerful but also being very fragile yeah. you know mm. that i want to master that space because you know it's it's diff- it's like a line that you have to walk and mm. and if you if you miss a step there there where you find is loneliness because you somebody has um uh, either been you know uh, not quite rude to you and you've been hurt or you know you cannot express yourself so that kind of loneliness yes i have felt and i've been only child as well so uh, and i've moved around a lot every two years so like i said that there was always this micro world where i was the new girl so, so another perhaps another personal consecutive yeah. question so how do you react uh, when you were separated since you said you were hard for something and you said you were very soft uh, yes. uh, do, do yes. you react through writing poetry or painting or you cry on your own when if you know cry? if i feel it's a question of justice like someone is being bullied or there is a dog mm-hmm. someone is hurting i mm-hmm. switch i completely switch into a, like a powerful animal like there is a split personality that comes out I, mm-hmm. that is there in me i will not let uh, let people i love be hurt or animals be hurt or children be hurt that kind mm-hmm. of thing but if it's a personal thing i've heard by i've, I've been hurt by what someone has said mm-hmm. and perhaps not even meant it because mm-hmm. we writers we are very sensitive you know we take everything mm-hmm. to heart and that's why we can write because we break and break and break so exactly. i break i cry i break and then mm-hmm. i doodle and then i write writers are perhaps or oh, artists are perhaps the most fragile species in the world so even though you show yourself powerful but inside perhaps uh, let us have another uh, performance from you shri uh, reading whether it can be poetry or uh, can i uh, uh, can i read like a 7 minute again a short story please, please and a gone. poem please go on um, this is a really personal piece and yeah. um oh, it's slightly bilingual so right, okay. yeah, there might there, uh, there might be a few lines of bengali in it but you'll yeah. understand it's mostly english okay. so uh yeah it's called totem mm-hmm. i watch her feeding the birds a strand of hair falls gently over her face one by one by one the birds emerge from various leafy corners this is perhaps the happiest part of her morning amidst the emerald doves the minas the bulbuls the blue throated flycatchers and some tiny fleeting ones that remain unnamed but flit about nonetheless unimportant yet so pretty the night has been rough she has taken sleeping pills more than she should have and yet I have heard her get up several times she has felt her husband's chest rise and fall reassuring herself that there is perhaps some life left inside him maybe another day later in the afternoon she settles down on the chair she positions her chair in between two separate spaces the balcony and the bedroom she moves it around till she finds the right spot the chair protests with slight screeching it all depends on her husband's health really sometimes she sits closer to the balcony near the rakta korobi throwing out its coral flames and frail dancing arms she wants to think quietly perhaps 
to never be interrupted, except by the little birds and beasts of the afternoon, even the less distinguished ones. Osha kaap, catch thori. Bari paira, dufuri mishti ghum ghum avaj kore. Shalik pakhi neche barai. Kukuchana, biskut khai. Chotto kalo beralta, paer kache ghumye thake. Ghum ghum dufuri, maje maje miao bole dake. She absorbs the presence of these urban animals that share her space. The feeling is mutual, peaceful. She wants to slip easily from one world to another without any sense of hostility or hurdle. She wants to sink deeper and deeper into her inner layers, away from the surface, with its hardened separate facts. Softly dozy, surrounded by dappled lights, her hair lightened with age, now a shade of sunshine. Soon she rises like a phoenix from the ashes of her sleep, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Ami kintu ghumoi ni. Ami ek tu bhab chilam. I wasn't sleeping, Shona. I was just thinking. Some embarrassment mixed with a lot of old world charm. Can you see that snail there? It lives in the tree trunk. I have watched it every day. It's a bit strange, frankly, looking for snails on tree trunks. It's hard to miss it though. It's big for a snail and there it's stuck quietly to the middle of the trunk, immersed inside the world of its shell. The almost and almost camouflaged by the flaming red flowers. It's quite big, she smiles. It has been here on this spot for more than a year. I have watched it get bigger and bigger. Every morning I look for it and it's always there for me. One day it had vanished, just gone. Maybe some bird had eaten it. We looked for it everywhere, but it was nowhere to be found. I missed it, you know. Next day it came back again, she smiles. It was just hiding, where could it go? This is home. The house, the room, the balcony, the chair, the tree, the flowers, the snail. The random bits of life woven together, a labyrinth of togetherness. Her eyes softly gleam. Through the snail I can see right into them. Maybe even deeper. What is she thinking? Soon it begins to rain. Soft whispers of water, pitter patter of the rain, hammering the window pane. I can see the lightning flash and hear the soft rumble in the skies, dark and misty like lonesome eyes. There is something idiotic about the self. Every day you have to get up and be the same person. Maybe that's not entirely true. The flowers wilt. The chair moves, the birds die, the clouds burst. Chano, Virginia Woolf had a golpo chilo. Act a snail chilo shay golpo tate. Mark on the wall. A koshusto mohila, shara din chere boshe boshe. Act a mark on the wall dictor bhakto. It a ki hote pare. Kano re, kache gia da kini kano. The reasoning tak into sound. Kiko re bochayeba. A woman's obsessive thoughts circle round and round a mark on the wall. At first, she sees the mark as a hole in the wall, then a blemish, and finally a round protuberance, like the head of a nail. She ponders on the flow of time, considering whether life is entirely accidental, or whether on the contrary, it follows some kind of pattern. Is there any rhyme or reason to things? Is there even a truth? In order to reach the truth, it's important to move close and examine the thing itself, which she never does. But in this case, the woman's internal world becomes the truth, chaotic, turbulent, in context of the snail. That remains in one place, 
शिंगारा भाजा हो गरम चा बृष्टि देखते देखते गान बंधुरा चोख छल छल जान बृष्ट कैक फोटा चोखे लेगे ग तीन नम्बर शिंगाटा लुकिए गप कर खे नहीं सेशन and also please like this page bromley if you'd like to update it about our future events uh, that we are interacting with um, musicians uh, especially filmmakers philosophers poets writers all around the globe and especially the contemporary poets and writers so please like the page the bromley and please do share today's session those who are watching uh, krishna koli bashu loneliness is an art to be mastered pam ghosh very well said shri the, the dichotomy of power and vulnerability yes. many thanks for your beautiful yes. input pam ghosh uh, samanta walker amazing very natural uh, that's an uh, shri's performance i think loneliness exists in all of us some are brave enough to acknowledge it but most try to defy uh defined in case people think there is there is a problem you know what i mean as though there is a mental issue well said jyotika loneliness we something that we have fated for actually and especially this sensitive people and especially the artists uh our souls the ah uh, soul soothing that's pam gosh said devashish bhattacharya shri is brilliant in both language great talent and needs to be nurtured mohu abashu i was uh, wishing you would read this shri bangali 
Like so many, it. many thanks those who, Sri, you add something extra to your literary talents as smoothness inside out. Priyanka Chakraborty, wonderful, uh, Samu. Joita Benarji, Joita Benarji, Ovidotto, amazing, well done, Sri Mahua, touching, so touching, Sri. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks for these inspiring comments. Uh, please do Thank share you. this live streaming for your friends so that they can enjoy this session and they can, uh, I mean, art to me actually is an illusion perhaps, uh, uh, is a way forward to, to uh, forget, to, uh, to be oblivious about death, about terrible side of the reality. Uh, and I'm sure uh, those who are watching, they may agree with me. And then if you kindly share, it will be helpful to, to forget what is happening uh, in the real world. Uh, so many thanks. Uh, Miles, I'm coming back to you. Let us read, let us listen to you. Uh, perhaps some more performances. Can I, do, more can I do just do two poems? Is that OK? Great, great. And then, I, and then, I, and then I'd better finish because my kids are here. Exactly, exactly. Great. It's all great. kicking off. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let us listen so uh the first this so there's two poems so thank you ahmed for having me and thank you uh to um to everybody for, yeah, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um shamim said read something from the border so i'm going to read something exactly. from the border um right. the first one is called coffee and uh um i thought about this recently because of black lives matter i wrote the i wrote the poem a long time ago uh and it's called it's called coffee Mm -hmm. lip, lip to neck and arse by thigh, we almost choked on each other, our breath ferocious in a war to stay human. I was starving for home. The smells stayed immobile in groaning air, human debris and the reek of coffee. We murmured in darkness, creaked with the timbers, craved a hard breeze. When they let us on deck, we filled it like flies at the eye of a horse. Tongue swollen, eyes shrunk, the waves were tempting. After docking, we were shoved, bossed, dressed up, starched. Groomed for parlors, we stood in shadowed rooms, kept tight in cuffs and collars. I waited near tables, poured coffee into pale cups, thought of skin and coins. I served it with silver spoons to giggling ladies with small and pretty eyes. I saw the floor, remembered my brother, his bold face, his big hands. I thought of winds twitching at the shore, the heat in the plantation, the sun on bare leaves, the distance between covered truth and blinding sorrow. Who fetches coffee and who drinks it? And um, this one, uh, I'll finish with this one. This is, a, this is a much more silly poem. So this is a lighter poem to finish with. So um, thanks for having me um, and thanks Ahmed for doing it. Thank you. This is called Shouting Down the Moon. Shouting Down the Moon. Sour day. Job lost, four pints dropped to a crater of stomach. I sprayed my borrowed confidence on a damp alley wall, slalomed streets to my door, dropped keys, swore at shoes, looked up, saw it there, a bright spectator. What are you, you looking at? Just because you've been studied Sung about, painted, prayed to, landed on. So what if you dictated sleep tides, times of the month? Come down here if you're so special. The moon slid behind cloud. I scrambled for bed, awoke with a planetary head. Beyond the window, grey rain eclipsed sky. I sighed wishing I had stars dancing across my orbit, 
never feeling the pull of redundancy or hangovers up there past planes and satellites where gravity counts a little less. Great. Fantastic, Miles. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, just before you go, uh, uh, just one, one question perhaps, uh, because I will ask this to others. For your own reading, whenever you, I mean, uh, sometimes we are pushed to read something, you know that something is getting best, bestseller and then you, you develop an interest and you're trying to find out what it is and you read it. But for your own personal time after perhaps midnight, you'd like to read something or read poetry. Whose poem do you like to read for yourself? Who do I go to? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there was just very briefly, there were three people that inspired me. Mm. Um, they were all English writers. Um, yeah. One was one was Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin, you mentioned, yeah. Philip Larkin's, although Philip Larkin's in trouble at the moment for reasons I won't go into. One was mm. Philip Larkin, another one was Carolyn Duffy, and another one was Simon Armitage. And they were all, in a way, they were all, um, in a way, they were all urban poets, in a way. They were all writing about urban life and modern Yeah, life, and then especially the crisis of modernity, perhaps. That's right. When, yeah, you mentioned yeah. about, when you mentioned about Philip Larkin, Philip Larkin is my favorite poet as well. But the other two has a distinct uh, connection with the North. Uh, Simon Armita is based in Sheffield. And then uh, I'm not sure that you, you are aware that uh, Caroline Duffy was based in Manchester, Manchester University. She she used to teach in Manchester University before. before the she, thing, the thing, the thing they right. had, the thing they had in common as well, I think, apart from mm -hmm. a, apart from a facility with language, was what they were very, they were very, um, they were very bold. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they they didn't. And sometimes they, very direct, very direct. Very direct. So that yeah. sort of directness, I think, I've got that in my writing a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miles. Thanks Thank you for your time. Much. Many, Thank many you. thanks. Let's come thanks. back to Claire. Thanks a lot. I'm going to go now, Ahmed. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Great. Cheers. Thanks Thank a lot. Bye-bye. Okay. That was wonderful. <laughs> great. So, Claire, uh, the same question to you. When you read for yourself, who's your favorite, who are your favorite poets, actually? Um, I mean, Mostly, perhaps from because I was interested in your Afro-Caribbean uh, uh, interest as well. Uh, did you do you have any clear connection or? Yeah, I mean, those when uh, the, I was enjoying you did masters in Afro-Caribbean literature or something like yeah, that. Um, specifically novels. Um, no. I, I like Michael on. I can't pronounce his name, but on on that J. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, on that, yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry. Right. On that, yeah. And what about Derek Wilcott? Did you did you manage to yeah, read? Beautiful. And mm -hmm. um, Audrey Lord, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but strange, the poet that got me writing was um, a white male, <laughs> Vernon Scannell, and he was writing about you know working class troubled children. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite poem, the poem that lit me up was a case of murder about a little boy who was left in a house with a cat and mm. kills the cat mm. and I wow you you can do that with words you can create a spell you can say things you wouldn't dream of saying so mm. um and and also um Rumi I if I wow. need guidance I have mm. to um just open my book and I'm I'm, I'm kind right. of Brought back down a little. Uh, and uh, I mean, trust me or not, I was just about to ask you about this because the 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 time you mentioned spirituality while while you were talking about your uh, this this sin, the spiritual uh, sin with your daughter, uh, and you said almost spiritual, and I was about to ask you whether uh, what's your interpretation about spirituality. And now I I can see the link. You you like Rumi, one of our favorite. Uh, Pagian poets, all time favorite, I should say. So, I mean, whose who's, uh, translation did you read? Uh, Fitzgerald or? Coleman Fitzgerald? Barks. Um, I mm -hmm. have Coleman Barks. Mm -hmm. I yeah. haven't, I must admit, I haven't read any of it. Maybe I should do that to give me another way. Could you suggest um, 
another translator of Rumi's work for me? No, I, but Barak is the uh, one that I, we mostly perhaps uh, non Persian read, but uh, uh, sometimes I don't know the translator, but I find it quite quite good translation in in Google, <laughs> in website, different websites. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did it. Uh, they did it uh, quite uh, uh, infrequently, or um, not just Rumi. They they uh, translated uh, different Persian poets. Uh, but uh, Bark is. Is is more widely, vastly popular. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let us perhaps have your last performance, last reading. Sure. And first of all, Sheree, I wanted to say I had to write down what you said about writers. Is that's why we can write because we break and break and break. I thought that was just absolutely tremendous. Absolutely, mm -hmm. really resonated with me. Um, thank you, Claire. That's our reality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And funnily enough, last week, before I finished the pamphlet, I was having lots of tears and, and I was saying, this is what I've chosen to do for a living and it's painful. Why, why am I doing something that's so painful? It's ridiculous. Um, but there, <laughs> that's how it is. Do you, do you uh, it just, it's, it may sound a bit personal because you said you cried. So do you, um, if you are hard for something or if you are uh, not uh, okay uh, mentally or uh, for some reasons, if you're hard, uh, do you cry or how do you react on, react on this? I, I'm a big crier, yes, I'm a big crier. Um, and I'm not afraid, you know, I'll cry in front of my children and I don't mm -hmm. have to hide. They have to see that kind of catharsis. Yeah and um, mm. allowing things to move through us. And I'm trying to be more conscious of um, allowing things, energy, uh, whatever, whether it's good energy or stuck and upset to allow it to pass mm. through. It's, it's Can I say crying, <laughs> crying is really healthy, but Claire, I think, you know, that, that exactly. can allow us to break many times. That's one <laughs> of the things I think. Right. Right. <laughs> No, it's not, it's for everybody. I think I I do cry a lot on my when I'm on my own, uh, and I can tell you when I cried last. So that's uh, and and especially writing helps a lot. Whenever you are not happy with something, whenever you are hurt at quite painfully by anything, uh, writing uh, gives you a very soothing ventilation. Uh, and then that's why, I mean, that's why, poet, I mean, most of the poet perhaps writes because they would like to forget some something. And most of the great piece of poetry is the reflection of, of the pain and suffered soul. You can see this when you read it, you can see the resonance of a suffered soul. Sometimes it's an uh, antibiotic medicine kind of mm -hmm. And it's very interesting that sometimes when you're doing a poetry reading, Maybe a poem you've read many times, maybe you say about your grandmother or whatever, and you'll read it and something will catch and it's kind of like it re-delivers the emotion you had mm. when you were in, uh, compelled to, to write it. And it comes as a bit of a surprise that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. True, true, true. So um, as, you, as you said, uh, Ahmed, I've done a few uh, collaborations with jazz musicians and... Yeah. Um, it, it's really interesting. In Wales, we've got a, a couple of um, poets and singers who've, um, um, for instance, Gwyneth Glynn and I think it's Tusif Aka, mm -hmm. uh, did an album called Gazalau, which is mm -hmm. Gazal and the Welsh word Alau. The, the, um, so they've worked together. And also mm -hmm. um, another jazz band called Birim, and they, they collaborate with a, a, an Indian band and they called Kamira. So there are some interesting intersections with. Um, with the different languages there. So mm. this is a kind of jazzy poem about that walk through the, the forest. Mm. It was just before lockdown and it's mm. called, And Nature Goes About Her Business. Mm -hmm. And nature goes about her business, despite the virus. There's more in the air beneath and on the surface. 
It's the first spring song in the forest, a busy treetop number, including a raven new to this track. Walking back through these woods after the school drop, blue tits flitting in and out of high notes and a woodpecker drumming sympathetic. I want to lean against that tree, feel his rat -tat 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 along my spine and in my teeth for him to make an instrument out of me. It's a jazz word, the pigeons flapping, squirrels scatting, the song thrush shoo boop boop be doing the finch off its limb so it can be king singer, but they all have a part to play. Even my little girl's boot print, perfect in the mud, pointing the other way, the earlier journeys we've made. I swivel my hips, press my foot in hers, and my heart beat, my spine frets, my every sinew string begin to stir a tune again. And instead of home, I go deeper into wood bone. Um, I'd really like to do that with some musicians. So if there are any out there. <laughs> So did you, when you when you did uh, or we'll have another another poetry another reading Claire if you can read another one but uh, because I'm interested in I'm also interested in how you uh, address how do you do you have to connect the trauma somehow uh, the trauma uh, what's that called uh, in the uh, hurricane. In Hurricane, yes. Did you, how did you, can you just tell us a bit more on the project that you did about yeah. music and poetry, combination of poetry, especially Zanz music. Zanz is much more improvised music, almost like Indian classical music. Sure, and thank you, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, when you, when you merge with poetry, that definitely develops a, develops something new, something great. Uh, but how did you connect this with the uh, with that issue? And then did it help? Can you just tell us a bit more how uh, uh, whether it helps people or you know how did you uh, develop the whole plan? Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's an, an interesting journey. So I lived in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and um, I left. I think it was a year before Hurricane Katrina, but I still had friends and family and. Um, things in storage and um, I got some funding to go back a few months after Katrina and um, I thought naively I would just go there and be the poet with the pencil and write things down my observations but of course it was so naive because when I got there it was catastrophe and it was a shock an absolute shock to my system it was it was traumatic and to see my friends and their houses gone and all, all manner of things. So I couldn't write at all. And when I returned, it took me a, a long, long time, years and years and years later, and I wrote a piece for the Wales Arts Review about my actual inability to write about it. And a jazz composer who has a, a quintet, um, he contacted me and said, we should work together to he could probably hear some music, I'm not a musician, but he could probably hear some musical ways of coming in in, in the, the piece I'd written. And so mm -hmm. we got, um, the uh, Arts Council gave us a little bit of funding to, to create a piece together. And what I found, Ahmed, was working with these musicians who have mm -hmm. such another sensitivity and intelligence and brought another emotional texture that it made me able to breathe and it elevated. I'm getting goose pimples now actually remembering it and um, quite, feeling quite emotional. Um, it allowed me to access something that I didn't need words for, that it was the bringing of words mm. and music and the space that held all that. And in fact, it was not the music or the poetry, it was the space of all that that allowed that catharsis. And a lot of people in the audience, I think, well, they commented that they felt that even though they hadn't been to New Orleans wow. and things like that. So um, that that it was mm -hmm. a very beautiful thing. I very, feel very privileged. Who's the, who's the musician did you work with? If you don't mind, I'm asking. Who's the musician did you work with? Um, it who's was Gareth. Did you work with? It, it was Gareth Roberts, and okay. it was his um, 
quintet and uh, Aidan mm. Thorne was on um, cello and um, the incredible um, wow. Mark O'Connor, sorry, Chris, uh, sorry, yeah, Mark O'Connor on drums. And I've since worked with him since then. And um, Gethin mm. Lidding was on trumpet and I've worked with Thomas Williams, who's another incredible trumpeter. And um, sorry, I'm going to forget names now, but... Um, um, mm. You Let me tell you one thing, Claire. Please, uh, please, uh, I will send you the link. Shodo, Shodo has done many, many, many uh, productions, many, many projects uh, all around the country. Actually, merging poetry and classical music. And classical, Indian classical music is like you said, Indian. That is, there is a profound affinity between Indian classical music and jazz music because mostly that is improvised form of music. And the uh, and the sensitivity, and the emotion it creates just enormous. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you the link and let us do something in Welsh and England. Let us yes. do something together in future. Yes, Many thanks, Claire. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Shri. Many thanks, Claire. Um, let us have another reading from you. Okay, so the, the last poem I want to read is, I'm from a working class mining village. My grandfather was a coal miner, my uncle and I lived in this really small village. And um, something incredible has come out of that village. The old mm -hmm. slag heap that was behind where I used to live, they now have allotments on there. And mm -hmm. one of the ladies in the village, she wanted, she bred whippets and pigeons and she wanted to breed a racehorse and everybody laughed. And she was like, well, no, mm -hmm. I want to breed a racehorse. And she bred a racehorse on the allotment where the, the slot heap was. And it was Dream Alliance who went on to win the Welsh Grand National. And there's a movie coming out, um, well, it's already out, but we have to wait till after lockdown called um, Dream Horse. And there's a beautiful docudrama called, um, I think it's called Dark Horse. And um, so it's an incredible story of hope and dreams coming alive and just an incredible, I feel incredibly proud to come from that same ground where a, a woman had a dream and a belief and with the community because she had a um, syndicate they did it. It's very beautiful. So it's, um, it's called Race. Mm -hmm. The newborn mother had not expected, perhaps, that thoroughbred jolt which fired expectation in her possibilities meeting prediction. She delivered her offering to the scent of a good vet, his tools to draw hope out. She would not have foreseen being taken with her long-legged foal to an allotment, to the sounds of chickens, gossip cluckers, the old breeze off the slag heap, classical MP3s, and the subtle chanting of her owners that this is where winners are bred. And that's for um, Janet and Brian Vokes who, who bred Dream Alliance, beautiful people. Thank you, thank you, many, many, many thanks, Claire. It's beautiful. So this, the story exactly. behind it as well. Magical. So magical, it's just unbelievable. So. Um, let, me, uh, let me read some uh, audience's feedback. Uh, Shusmita Bhattacharya, beautiful Claire. Mohua Boshu, that's amazing Claire. Uh, Mohua Boshu also wrote rhythmic Claire. That was so nice to read. So connected to nature. Pam Ghosh, amazingly lyrical Claire. Uh, uh, really magical Claire, that's what. Uh, uh, Pam Ghosh also wrote, agree, writing can be a great reflection of pain. Many thanks you would say this. Yes. Uh, and deep feelings. It is a way to escape as well. At least yes. it is for me. For me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Palm Ghosh, wow, great miles. Uh, Mohua Boshu, miles, uh, really great. And then Krishna Koli Boshu, Bishan Shundar Sri. It's a beautiful painting in words. Wow, great, exactly. So your painting background is quite visible when you read <laughs> Sri, when you, when you write, when you read your writing. Zephyr, uh, Zephyr Manoz, impressed by Sri's rendition. Uh, many thanks, those who watched, let us come back to Sri now. What are you reading in the end? And, and, and then the question that I asked Claire, 
and Miles, when you read for yourself, what would you read? Um, I actually read, I used to read a lot of books together, but there are some books which you just read and they just digest you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. It so, does, yeah. so when I was in college, and maybe one of my professors, he's watching because he's in London right now in comparative literature. And mm. um, and did you, did you study did, in Jadavpur University? Jadavpur yes, University. Yes, and, yes. Yeah, one and, of the um, best and university for comparative literature. It was yes. incredible. It opened exactly. me to world literature, mm. and. Exactly. Uh, I began with the classics first, you know, Sartre, existentialism, mm. his wife, Simone mm. de Beauvoir, you know, the second mm. sex, and uh, mm -hmm. they really inspired me. She came to stay, mm. flies, mm. those kind of mm. things mm. made me like as if I'm different from the world. That was a phase, you mm. know, I, I know so much kind of. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, the, when you start writing or really understanding art, you become more and more humble you realize mm. that you are nothing, you know? Mm. And we all mm. are here, we are just going to die. You know, that's mm. the truth. And it's how beautifully we spend our time. And then I discovered a book, um, I don't know if you've read uh, J.M. Coetzee. Hey, yeah, exactly. Coetzee's, um, perhaps those who are watching, everyone's, uh, every, I mean, my favorite, some of, some of his, uh, What's his name? What's the name? The uh, Life and Times of Michael like, Shea. Exactly, exactly. Michael and, Shea, exactly. Yes. And there was another book which again swallowed me, which was mm. Disgrace. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It was Di so bad. You know, it make you feel we all are going to die. It's horrible, this, that. But the kind of pain that I felt along with the kind of pleasure, the mm. life and death together, it just, and the brevity of words. His is, is disgrace of is disgrace the one he got a uh, Booker Prize for? Perhaps okay. the disgrace is the one who, that he got Booker Prize for. Could be. If this I'm is, not wrong. This yeah. is the one mm. where he falls in love with this uni student and then mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he's out of the university and goes to live with his daughter who's a lesbian. Mm -hmm. it's really, mm -hmm. it's a really amazing book. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. one. But recently, a book has really managed to eat me alive again. It's called mm -hmm. The Vegetarian by Han Khan. She's won a book a couple of years back and it reminded me of Kafka's Metamorphosis uh -huh. it's about a woman turning into a tree gradually. Uh -huh. It's incredible. What's the book called? Did you say? What's the book? Did you say? The Vegetarian. It's and she was a South Korean it writer. Was it Han, Han Khan. Han Khan. And Han Khan, yes. And the right. way she's written it, I mean, it's dark and beautiful and light. You know, it's mm -hmm. just kind of just how mm -hmm. it should be, I suppose. So those mm -hmm. are a few of the books. I'm just starting to read uh, Elif Shafak, read The Bastard. Mm, yeah. that's, of what, that's what you mentioned while he was talking to, over the phone. Read yes. The Bastard of Istanbul, which is mm -hmm. quite an old book, really, 2004 mm -hmm. or something, but it's really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, another, um, another author who is very precious to me, and he's very controversial, is Oran mm -hmm. Pamuk. Or in Pamuk, right, okay. Uh, I, I love what, his Museum of Innocence. Mm -hmm. And what's the other one uh, that he got Nobel Prize for? My Name is Red. My Name is Red, yes. Yeah. That's the one I read. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, then uh, for some reasons, I I, I lost interest in him. Uh, you know, but Elif Shafak. My Red, the, the, the translation was awful, really. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I couldn't, I, I couldn't I didn't, continue. I, I didn't like it, but... Museum of Innocence, if you mm -hmm. read it, I know because you have that, you have to advise me on cinema and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know much. I have to mm -hmm. get that mm -hmm. knowledge from you. But mm -hmm. uh, my name, um, Museum of Innocence is very cinematic. It's, it? oh. mm -hmm. it's very sensuous. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you feel Istanbul on various levels in mm -hmm. that book, I think. And so is Elif Shafak, isn't it? She's, mm -hmm. she's sharp. Mm -hmm. She's exactly. a lady with a purpose inside, you know. She's so much to say. Exactly. She has exactly. Wonderful. Shri, let us uh, have another performance. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm not sure that you uh, read uh, Flaubert's uh, uh, Madame Bovary. Uh, yes, I'm just, I did, yeah. Uh, this is my next work that I'm, I, I, I was away from doing uh, these kind of things for many years. 
But now uh, I'm planning to do an Indian interpretation of Madame Bovary, Clovis, oh beautiful, phenomenal. So perhaps I'll talk to you whether you'd be interested in a, just a cinematic representation of. Definitely, it's one of and, my all-time favorite books. Did you did you read it? Exactly. Absolutely. You talk about loneliness. It's there. You talk about feminism. It's there. It's there. Exactly. Freedom and entrapment. It's exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's an incredible book. Incredible. I literally like you know could feel her pain. Exactly. And exactly. It's so beautiful. I will talk to you, but let us have another performance from our least based writer. Shri Ganguly. I think I can read ten minutes out of my short story. It's sure. too big. It's like a, it's a well, long we can, short we can, story. We can still continue. Yeah. And yeah. I'll just read about ten minutes from that, a part of it. And this one has been published, so it's available on Amazon. Right. And what's the what, what's the oh the published as a book? The book's name is Grit. Right. Okay. Grit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's got yes, and this my story's name is a stolen night. Right. So I'll just read a little bit, you know, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I've read it once. Maybe you've heard it. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll just read a little bit of that one, if okay. that's okay. He looks up stealthily. He cannot remember the last time when he has seen something so young, so taut. He can count the vertebrae on her back long and serrated like a gold necklace. When she turns around, her head tilted to one side, breathing deeply, almost incognizant of the room, of him, of the utter stillness, apart from the slow whirring fan overhead. Come here, she says, look. At a distance, the silver sea meets the lilac sky. The long, stretched out, colorless beach stares back like a blackened slate. Mandarbani, neither here nor there, somewhere nestled in between, a long forgotten world, just the sea and the sand and the coral crabs. The fireflies waft around the windows, burning dots that set her hair alight. She gestures with her hands, her eyes wide as if she has just woken up from a deep, deep sleep. She holds him like an equal, straight, tall, strong. And although she's more wasted, she stands on her toes and kisses his eyelids with her lips, half dangling from his arms, her feet on top of his. Has anyone told you that you have the longest lashes and the longest legs, Kay? She asks. Isn't that what I'm supposed to tell you? He laughs in spite of himself. He holds back as long as he can, passive, as her body rises and falls on him like a watery curtain. They have always made love in darkness, on stolen nights, nights stolen from his wife. His finger runs through her spine, the rigid bones, the smooth, hard flesh, reminds him of London somehow, of the Natural History Museum, the bare leafless trees filled with dry, brittle nests from large glass windows, and Ronnie, wearing his best sad puppy look, wanting a pet dinosaur. But why can't I have one, Daddy? I can count them all, look. I know they have 300 vertebrae. Why can't I have a model in my house? He can almost hear Ronnie's soft, cooing voice, his sudden musings, his whims, his child's urges echoing through the semi-darkness, the bones, the feathers, and the corpses. For a moment, he's certain Ronnie's in the next room, that he's afraid he'll cry out, shattering the silence of the night, and the night will end up like it invariably does. With his wife turned to one side and the ayah cradling the shrieking boy in some other room and Kay smoking out his last cigarette on the veranda, the night jasmine smelling stronger, fiercer, sweeter, dying softly with the turning day. 
for a long time, he thinks of Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's the fiercest of them all, a carnivore. He stifles himself with the pillow so as not to taint the silence. It's so pure, so empty. And that is how he feels, half molten inside and half crumbling. He chooses not to see her face till the very end, till she cries out softly like a kitten, her nails digging deeper and deeper into his hair. It's only when he looks up at the red splodges down her cheek, like the roses that his wife orders from Odorantus in Paris, that he begins to feel a connection, like a silken thread, a fleeting moment that says, Life might have a meaning after all. He cries afterwards in the washroom, tears streaming down his face. He has never felt so strong or so weak. He has never before let himself feel so disconnected, so deflated. Just for less than a moment, he feels as if something has broken inside. Given away after all these years, Next moment, he's calm, strong, collected, all man. He gets out, still moist from splashing cold water, the shadow of a beard beginning on his sharp, angular face. She says, her voice hoarse, let's go for a drive. He can see her sitting on the bay window, already a stranger, her eyes scanning the view, the thread half snapped. What now? Yup. No, no, we'll be seen. So what? Let's just go for a drive. He thinks of a roommate, N. But she can read his mind quicker than he can think. There's nothing slow and languorous about her, like his wife, Tina. Her etiquette, her sense of poise, the little mini that she drove around Oxford when he studied here with him all messy hair and pale skin, now jaded and distant. The roommate's as good as dead. She's super stoned. She'll not be back till morning. She laughs. And then with one eyebrow raised, her left foot dangling from the windowsill. I thought you bongs are forward. What's stopping you now? I want a drive. And if you don't, I'll drive myself. She lights, she lights a light roll up. Her hands shake a little, restless, clumsy even, but sharp as a streak of lightning, unrestrained like her name, Arundhati, boundless. But everyone calls her Dhup, which also has a meaning, the scorching sun, scalding and metallic. Are you sure you should mix this stuff? He asks, feeling outdated. What, after snorting, she laughs at his ignorance, at his age even. It goes out pretty fast, she says. I'm clean now. I need a drink, a quick one. Come on, her words overlap, keeping her up with her pace. They creep through the narrow hotel corridor, limp roll-ups in hand, whiskey flask in her bag. He feels uncertain, young, aroused once again by the vibrant smells. Sea, salt, froth, whiskey, weed, all soft and hard and sweet. I feel like cake, she says, biting her lips. I feel like cake. Get me something quick. I feel hungry. Cake, cake, cake. She cries out on a whim like a child, sticking out her lips, half crouchy. He laughs as he listens to the soft rumbling sound of her tiny waist. It's too late for cake, though. The shops are closed. There must be some bread in the minibar. Can you get me some bread? He hesitates. Is it safe to leave her outside? It's too secluded. The whole of Mandarmani, not a soul loitering at night, just the buzz of the insects and the distant roars of waves, pitch dark apart from the fireflies. You get in the car, he hands her the keys, and on second thought, he leads her to the gleaming black Audi himself. Stay here, okay? Lock the car. 
I'll be back in a second. He walks back, his body aching. He has been driving four hours after work, all the way from Kolkata in the mad traffic. And now he feels isolated. If he has been, as if he has been transported in a dream world, invisible, invincible. Nobody knows he is here. And yet they know in the morning when they see his car, if they see his car at all, he has thought of an excuse as to why he has come. A story just in case. When he returns holding a warm toast with honey on a tissue, she's on the driver's seat ready to roar. He cannot allow her to drive. He knows she's far too drunk, but she's too full of disdain. Her sense of restraint has crumbled too, like her own crumbling insides. She's the queen of darkness, of the dancing fireflies. It's all upside down right now. In the morning, things get real. He knows that in spite of his position, he cannot control Dhoop. Not now, not at night. She's 20 years younger, fresh as the night jasmine, just as pungent. She drives callously, laughing, the only consolation that it's a straight, endless stretch of empty beach, 13 kilometers from the beginning till the end. She breaks suddenly in the middle of nowhere, the soft sand spattering around the wheels. What now? I need to pee. No, no, it's not safe to stop here, he says. I need to pee, I'm bursting. Okay, quick. He shifts to the driver's seat while she's gone head reeling. She reaches, he reaches off for a bottle of water as she squats down in the middle of the empty beach, the waves lapping her feet, the moon one fourth eaten up, the sand moist. He wants to remain in that moment, but his mind wanders. He thinks of Tina, his wife, just as undignified as Dhoop looks right now. Her tiny white feet over her head her sweaty hands holding on to his and the doctors sowing the seed. Look at the screen, Mrs. Sen. It's a dot, the beginning of a new life. It'll find a way this time. Later, when they sit around in the cafe near Park Street, she cries, hard, bitter sobs. Maybe third time lucky, she says, not believing in her own words, strangely vulnerable. When Dhoop gets back, she has forgotten to put on her tiny denim shorts. They lie on the beach like a woman's upturned backside, metallic blue like the water and shining. When he gets them back, he holds them up, time slipping through the holes of their feet like sand. For a moment, he forgets what he's doing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he remembers the right now, Saturday night, a stolen night. She kisses him softly and the car shakes with her things. Pants, fags, purse, bag, lip gloss, sandals, the little love shack. This time he cries out louder than her. And then he laughs, his happiness ringing through the silence. What the heck? But as they rest for a few minutes, seeping into solitude, he feels ashamed, reduced to nothing. The thread snapped twice. The silver sea spilled all over the midnight sky. She gulps some whiskey meat from the flask. Let's go, let's go, what are you waiting for? Let's go and see where the river meets the sea. She's not really thinking. He drives hard as if the wet, wet sand cannot hold him back. Nothing can. She likes his hands, his nails dull white against the wheatish skin. She likes his smells, old leather against wood, a hint of lemon and fraying books. She likes his cigarettes, the faint smell of ash that trails behind. But most of all, she likes the sharp bony cleft on his chin. She strokes it now and then, the hard line 
dividing his face, the jagged bones clashing against the softness of his eyes, the spiritual and the cerebral and the carnal all muddled up. She enjoys this rift, his books, his strength, his weaknesses. My mother knows your wife, she says softly looking up at him. They swim at Tolly's, but they've never spoken. I'll just read till this much because then there is other half left, you know, it is, it's quite a long story. So that's, that's a great reading tree, to be Thank honest. You. Let me tell you one thing. This is first time it happened to me. I, I am not, to be honest, a big fan of uh, short sentences uh, because I, I would like to, when I write for myself, I like to process so many information. And then once I miss, I feel, I'm not sure why it happens. I feel that uh, someone, when uh, someone reading my story or poem, perhaps they can, they will just read just one sentence. One sentence, mm -hmm. and then they may die after this. So one sentence has to, uh, whatever sentence he or she reads, has to give so much detail, so much information. That's why it's hard for me to write short sentences, but first time uh, I was hugely intrigued while you were reading these short sentences, but also describing, uh, and then uh, almost like you are doing Vistar of Braga, you are expand, you are exploring one after another through these short sentences. Uh, uh, many, Thank many you. times you know, while Thank you are reading, you. almost like a effect of uh, <laughs> uh, dew drop was happening constantly. <laughs> He was Thank calling you. one after another. Many, many thanks. Let me also let me also acknowledge uh, our gratitude to uh, three of our great friends who are helping and supporting this session. Uh, Shahin Mitul, a spoken word artist, a great friend of us, a great lover of uh, Granthi's activities, great supporter of Granthi's activities. Many thanks for your support. Jasmine Choudhury, a wonderful friend of us, um, and a a uh, mainly a political activist, uh, but art and literature connoisseur. Uh, she's also a spoken word artist. Many thanks, Sarwari Alam, a great friend of us, a poet and journalist who is helping this session uh, behind the scene. Many, many thanks. So Claire, if you'd like to add your concluding notes, we are approaching the end. Sorry, if you kindly, uh, you, are un you are muted, so if you kindly unmute yourself, many thanks, yeah. Um just thank you to everybody here and everybody who's been listening. And this has been a beautiful um, sharing and I feel like I've got a lot to digest. Sheree, I think you're just incredible, the things. Um, thank you. Interior and exterior. And um, Ahmed, the word I'm taking from you today is ventilation. I like, I'm going to be meditating on, on that, you know. The, 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 <laughs> The coming and going and the being permeable to, to ideas and emotions. I'm very grateful for, for you giving me this platform to share some, some work and to hear some beautiful words. So thank you. Very I look much. forward to collaborate together, Claire. Uh, we will be in touch. So let me read some uh, final comments from the audience. Uh, Krishna Kolibosu, many thanks for your wonderful uh, comments. Vegetarian, it's nice when you see that some uh, some good readers, wonderful readers are watching this session. Uh, Krishna Kuli, vegetarian, has a beautiful yet eerie raw silence embodied, embodied in it. Disgrace, Pam yes. said disgrace, I was going to say when you mentioned this. Ovidotto, beautiful, so well written, so descriptive. Mohua Boshu, you read so beautifully, we were listening spellbound you have done an excellent climax building. Zafir Manoj, quite intriguing Shri, Palm Ghosh, really well-read um, yeah, Shri, beautiful visceral description. Yeah, that's the word I, I really like. Uh, you use visceral description. Again, great depiction of uh, a dichotomy. Many, many thanks those who left comments and those who shared, uh, those who were, who were with us. Many thanks, Claire. Many thanks, Miles, if you're watching now, uh, uh, for being the part of this uh, session. Gronti will explore 
through this session, uh, uh, interactive session actually, would like to explore uh, the journey uh, of poets, writers uh, all around the globe. And, and uh, like you said, like you all have said, we would like to bring this beautiful presentation of spoken words to all of you. So please stay tuned, stay with us. I would like to uh, go to Shamim Chan if you'd like to add any concluding note. The editor, uh, the important man behind this, uh, the whole activities, uh, Shamim Chan would like to add anything on this. Concluding uh, note. Thank you, uh, Chairman Kaisar. The Gronti has been honoring the creative experimental writer for the last 30 years. Everyone was, is, and will be. Those who are watching in today's session, thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you so much, today's honorable guest, writer, Shri Ganguly. Thank poet, you, thank you. Welcome. Poet, Claire Porter and poet, Miles Salta. So Many nice. thanks. Many thanks, poet, Tim Ahmed Kaisar. Stay with us, everyone. Thank you so much for your everyone time. Thank you. Many thanks, Shri. Would you like to add your concluding note before we yes. finish? First of all, Kezarda, thank you for having me. I'm intrigued by your knowledge in films and books as well and looking forward to many more discussions with you, either whether it's one-to-one, -one, whether it's in a forum. Secondly, I would love to, I don't know how to say this, but meeting both Claire and Miles today and sharing with Claire my experiences it was really beautiful. Her poetry is, it resonates with nature so much. It's like feeling, smelling, walking, you know, just experiencing nature and the sounds of nature. And sure. lastly, I'd like to thank my friends. They all have really busy schedules and they have actually come in here today and spend this time, the time of rest, you know, listening to, uh, listening to all, listening to the poems and the stories. And I'm really, really grateful to them and for their comments as well. Shri, please convey my regards and love uh, from Gronti as well uh, to your friends. Some of your friends uh, made such a lovely comment and they're uh, seemingly uh, very, they're very, very, very good reader, very good, good reader, reader. Yeah, and very uh, knowledgeable reader. Um, so many thanks to them, many thanks to those who already left a beautiful comment. Uh, and, and please stay tuned. Uh, um, we, uh, I mean, we will come back to you again uh, with some wonderful writers, wonderful poets, wonderful philosophers. Uh, so uh, have a wonderful rest of the evening and good night to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night.